Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome back to A Nation of Immigrants, a bi-weekly interview program featuring the lives of immigrants, knowledge, diversity, and inclusion. Brought to you by Think Tank Hawaii, Kingsfield Law Office, and the U.S.-China Cultural Media Group. Our guests share their life stories, journey to the United States, and their contributions to the cultural diversity. Today, we are particularly thrilled to have the Honorable Judge Wendy Lee from New York City Civil Court. Judge Lee, welcome. Thank you very much. Well, we are so honored to have you to be our guest. And we are in this, particularly in this Spring Festival special for 2024, the Year of the Dragon. First, Happy New Year, Judge. Wish you a very prosperous and a successful New Year of Dragon. Happy New Year to your Chan and Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you, Judge. Well, Judge, you have been an active and influential member of the civil court of the city of New York. During the past five years, you have published more than 70 judicial opinions in civil and criminal cases in Brooklyn, Queens, and Manhattan. You are a firm believer in the principle of fairness, compassion, and equal treatment for all under the law. You have been served our community very well, and as the, you are running for the next surrogate court judge in the county of Queens. I'm so happy to learn that you are a graduate of Peking University, my alma mater. You also have a degree from Harvard University and Oxford University. You won election to the court in 2018 after a long and illustrious career in private law practice. You are also a first-generation immigrant. It's now that you are running for the surrogate court judge in Queens County. When elected, you will be the first woman, the first minority, and the first Asian American surrogate court judge in the county of Queens, and the first Asian American surrogate court judge in the city of New York and in the entire state of New York. This is just an amazing judge. Lee. Uh, I'm uh, also a graduate, first generation immigrant, and I'm also a graduate of Peking University. I'm particularly interested to hear you journey to the United States. When I came to the United States, I was 28 years old. And uh, I wouldn't say it, is a, it was a cultural shock, but uh, there were a lot of adjustment that need to be done. I'm curious, Judge, how was your uh, first impression of the United States and how did your experience at the Peking University School of Law shaped your perspective on law and the Justice. Uh, thank you very much, Chang, for your kind words. And it is always my pleasure to connect with uh, Peking University uh, alumni, especially because uh, Peking University Law School played a vital role in shaping my perspective on law and justice. It is thanks to the uh, academic environment and overall exposure to the diverse legal tradition that broadened my understanding of the law. Uh, the program in Peking University shaped my view on law being a tool for promoting uh, fairness and the belief that the law should be accessible to all, regardless of anybody's background and in the country of origin. So my experience at Peking University laid the foundation for my commitment to fairness, which continues to gu guide me to these days in my career as a judge. And of course, when I came to the United States, I was already 28 years old. Uh, similar to you, I faced the unusual difficulties uh, that migrants encounter, such as adopting to the whole new culture and the legal system. With that being said, I also quickly realized that it was also a land of opportunity where I could utilize my legal expertise to make the positive impact and this life transition I had at the age of 28 reinforced my belief in the importance of equal access to justice 
and the lead address the legal needs of our immigrant communities. It, they, it is this uh, experience that drive me uh, and uh, give me the passion for serving our diverse Queens community today. Very well said, Judge. Thank you so much. Uh, what motivated you to run for the position of surrogate judge, surrogate court judge in Queens? And how do you envision your role in this capacity? Thank you. The motivation behind my decision to run for the uh, surrogate court judge in the kind of Queens is deeply rooted in my commitment to fearless compassion and the equal treatment for all. I believe that the surrogate court is a place where this principle should be upheld, especially when it comes to matters of inheritance, guardianship, and family. I envision my role as one of ensuring that justice is served, families are protected, and the rights of all individuals, regardless of their background, are respected. Very well said. Thank you, Judge. Giving you background and understanding of immigrant struggles, and how do you plan to address the unique legal needs of immigrant communities in Queens and in New York? Well, as you know, I'm an immigrant myself. I first can know how daunting it is to go to the courtroom uh, mm -hmm. and how difficult it, it, it is to navigate the court system. So in my own professional life, I was often told that I should not to run, uh, just like in 2018, that uh, someone told me that I shouldn't run because I have the accent and I was not born in the United States. So in the reality, it is that a queen is a melting pot. We do have unique challenges and legal needs that I plan to fulfill. And of course, um, my first step would be to create a more inclusive and accessible legal system by working to provide language access and to have a more equipped interpreters in our core system to help our immigrants to navigate the uh, legal system, especially the surrogate core is about the living, it's not about the dead. So I want to make sure our families that are going through the difficult time will receive the assistance they need in order to move on with their life. Thank you. Yeah, I remember when I was in China and uh, the family, the friends, they always try to avoid court at all cost. Go uh, engage in a litigation, initiate a litigation is just a, a, a thinkable. But uh, in the United States, so we uh, we consider going to the court is is just a, a come a normal. It's very very normal. But uh, uh, anyway, looking at your resume, Judge, you have received education in three countries in China, in the United States, and the United Kingdom. How has your diverse educational background influenced your judicial philosophy, especially in the terms of your understanding of fairness and compassion in the courtroom? Well, thank you. I think my diverse educational background has deeply influenced my judicial philosophy. Uh, it has taught me that fairness and compassion are essential and should be at the core of every decision I make. The interaction between different legal systems and cultures have taught me the importance of understanding and respect uh, and respecting diverse perspectives. In the courtroom, I believe in treating everyone with dignity and ensuring that justice is not only bland but also compassionate. And because of my cultural background, I will be able to understand the difficulties that the litigants uh, uh, face uh, when they come to my courtroom. So I think that um, with compassion and understanding is a key uh, uh, for the litigants who come before me. Yes, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, when you elected, you will be as the first Asian American surrogate court judge in New York, and uh, uh, we very much look forward to celebrate. 
how does this potential milestone mean to you personally and professionally? Thank you very much. And uh, I think it's a great deal. Can you believe it that we don't have any minority? We don't have any um, female surrogate court judge in the kind of queens, and we don't even have the Asian American surrogate court judge in New York. Uh, New York City, and we don't even have the Asian American female surrogate court judge in the entire states of New York, and it's already 2024. So the uh, upcoming milestone uh, of becoming the first Asian American surrogate court judge, uh, female judge in the entire state of New York means a great deal to me, personally and professionally. Uh, it is an opportunity to break barriers and to provide representation to underrepresented communities. It is a chance to inspire others, especially young women of color, to pursue careers in law and in public service. And this milestone is a testament to the pro progress we have made towards a more inclusive and diverse legal system. Thank you. Of course, that will be a milestone for New Yorker as well. Uh, Judge Lee, uh, we were introduced by a mutual friend, another Asian American uh, lawyer in practicing in the city of New York. And when uh, I, I heard from many other Asian and Chinese American uh, lawyers talking about you, everybody speak very highly about you. And because you have been a mentor to many young professionals and law students. Uh, could you tell us more about your role as a mentor? And uh, you mentioned that uh, being a role model for younger generation, and how and why do you believe it's important to engage in community in this professional way? Right. So in 2018, I was uh, successfully elected to the bench. Uh, so, and this year I'm running for Korean surrogate school judge, and I want to have my uh, campaign as example to our young generations, especially to me, I'm ca I came here at the age of 28, so it's, uh, it's much older, uh, compared with lots of immigrants who came to this, uh, uh, this country to study. So I want to show them that if I can do it, you can do it as well. Right, so I came here, I went to school, I started my legal career at City of Austin in New York as an associate and I became law firm partner at international law firms. So, and then eventually I became judge. And with my career uh, experience, and I want our young people to know that if Judge Lee can do it, you can do it as well. So mentorship is something that I actively incorporate into my lifestyle and hold dear to my heart. It is essential to guide and inspire the next generation of legal professionals. By engaging with students and professionals, I hope to instill in them the values of justice, fairness, and community service. And it's important to bridge the gap between the legal profession and the community we serve so mentorship in itself helps me to create a stronger, more informed, and um, with a compassion legal community. And thank you for that. Thank you, Judge. Uh, in addition to mentoring to young professionals, you have been teaching your legal educator as well. You've been teaching at uh, Oxford University. And, but legal education is changing. It's, uh, it's not at the uh, same time or same teaching pedagogy. You and I received legal education uh, some years ago. I still quite vividly remember the Socratic method my professor engaged during the class discussion. The, how do you think, how do you view the change of legal education? And do you believe in legal education can continue to prepare our younger generations for the reality of the current day legal system? So, 
Believe it or not, uh, when I was much younger, uh, when I was in my teenagers, I, I thought I would become a teacher. And mm. uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, of course, I was teacher uh, at, uh, uh, I was tutor at Oxford University, St. Catherine's College. And mm. uh, I love that experience. And I believe that law school is about more than educating and statues and cases. And it is the first and foremost about investing in students in a way that develops them into professionals, not only with a sense of commitment to justice, but also appreciation of the interaction between law and other disciplines and professions. And in our ever increasingly globalized world, it also means developing the global awareness and preparing them to function in a multicultural and globalized environment. I still remember that uh, when I went to take the California bar examination, at that time it's a three days examination. The first day is the writing, second day multiple choice, the third day is uh, um, another ethic writing. So I think the way that law school uh, examination, especially in California, is that the third day of the examination, there's not there's no real statues, there's no uh, uh, case book. It's just a hypothetical uh, case, hypothetical statues. And then the students have to just learn how to write in a persuasive way. And then you just pick a position and you argue for it. And then that's the most important thing about law school is about the logic. Uh, it's, it's about the preparation. Uh, it's not about remembering the statue or re remember uh, uh, just to, um, you know, read something and then um, uh, repeat it in the examination. Rather, it's a thought process. So it's all about preparation, about the logic, about the appreciation of the law and other disciplines. Thank you very much, Judge. Thinking like a lawyer, that's exactly what we say, thinking like a lawyer. But I wouldn't say I had a pleasant experience at law school for three years, but uh, if I have had an opportunity to go back to law school, uh, will be, I will do it in a heartbeat. I think it's the best ed education I have ever received, and uh, I have been tremendously benefited uh, by the legal education in the United States. And the training and transition me from an artist to a lawyer. And I, I agree everything you just said. Now, Judge Lee, you will soon become uh, the first Asian American judge in the surrogate court in Queens. Uh, as a mover and a shaker, you're running for this position, running for a uh, surrogate court judge, which means you have the visions. You have a long-term vision for the court. What are your long-term goals for Queens Surrogate or uh, Queens County Surrogate Court, and how do you plan to implement the changes that reflect your values of fairness, compassion, and equal treatment? Right. I think looking ahead, my long-term goals for Queens Surrogate Court are centered on making it a beacon of fearless compassion and equal treatment. I plan to implement changes that overall enhance the accessibility and streamline process and ensure that the court works towards serving the needs of our community. At the end of my term, I want to look back and see that the court has become a place where people feel hurt and respect it, and where justice goes beyond just a word into a lived reality for all one step at a time. So especially that I would like to um, enhance the language assistance in the court system, because some of the immigrants or some of the families, they went to the court and some of the parents might not speak English. So that um, justice delayed is justice denied. And we want to make sure that uh, everyone 
regardless which language they speak and where they're from, um, they can have the access to the court, uh, that they can be heard, and then the case can be handled. And I want to make sure that everybody will receive the equal treatment under the law. And thank you. So true. Thank you, Judge. We normally uh, conclude our program with two difficult questions. I'm joking. Two questions uh, to our distinguished guest. And I'm going to ask you the same uh, two questions. The first question is, assuming time travel is permitted, you could travel back 20 years to your early 20s and fresh out of college, fresh out of Peking University School of Law. And now you're meeting your younger self. What would advise, what kind of advice you would to give to yourself? What wisdom you have now you would like to share with a younger Wendy Lee? Well, that's a rather a difficult question. And I wouldn't think of any other way uh, to live my life at uh, the way it is now for me because um, freshly out of the law school, uh, from Peking University, the only goal I have is to become a lawyer, a good lawyer, and um, become a good lawyer at international law firms. And I made it. And uh, of course, uh, being a lawyer, the, um, the only goal is to be a partner at international law firms. So I did it as well. So I guess I picked one direction and I ran for it and I go for it. Uh, I guess that would be the same thing I would do even if I have a second life and um, being a judge and to help everybody. This is so true. This is the, <laughs> the best answer I ever heard because uh, it was said that in a parallel universe, a different us uh, is doing a little bit different thing but uh, by pure serendipity, we are sharing the same, you know, visions, uh, same, same compassion of life. The next question is about the recommendation. Uh, as a judge, I don't know how much uh, the spare time you have for, uh, for reading and watching movies and watching Netflix, but uh, anyway, the question is, are there any particular uh, book or movies you have enjoyed and deeply resonated with you and you would recommend to our audience? Well, that's another uh, difficult question because most of the time I'm reading the law books. Yes. <laughs> but I do think there's a, a, a good book. It's called Civil Procedure. Um, that, that okay. young lawyers, um, they, uh, how to navigate the court system. Um, mm -hmm. of course it's a civil procedure is important to, um, to help the young lawyers to understand how the court works. Uh, so that's one book that I could recommend. And in terms of the movie, I, um, I do like the movie Titanic. A lot. I still remember that um, uh, before I came to the United States, um, the Titanic uh, uh, was uh, first found uh, internationally. So, and I love the music over there. And um, of course, that uh, if you ask me a different question as to uh, which paintings I like, um, I would have lots of answers for you because. Uh, uh, when I have a spare time, I do paint. I do oil paintings, mm. watercolors, and, you know, um, I like the shade. I like the lights. Um, so that's something that I spend most of my um, leisure time, if I do hire, uh, to paint. Mm. And, of course, I also go ski. So if you ask oh, me a ski question, I will have a lot to talk about. Uh, 
Thank you. Thank you, Judge. That's wonderful. Uh, we are entering the, uh, we have already entered the year of dragon. And this year, according to Chinese astrology, will be a year of a big change, uh, innovation, creativity, but uh, also potentially turbulence. But anyway, during the holiday season, we celebrate everywhere in the world for Chinese communities and many other Asian communities. How do you celebrate? How did you celebrate the Spring Festival in New York, Judge? Well, uh, this is uh, uh, during my campaign season, so uh, I actually uh, went to uh, quite a few parades and I went to uh, quite a few Lunar New Year celebrations and uh, in the city of New York, uh, either in Queensboro, in Brooklyn, in Manhattan, there are lots of gatherings for the Lunar New Year. And it's wonderful. It's a place and it's a time for us to, to get together with our families, our friends and communities. I think this year is a wonderful year for, for change and a wonderful year for happiness and uh, a wonderful year to get things done. Especially that uh, we will elect the first um, Asian American female surrogate court judge in the entire state of New York, and I'm very uh, excited. Absolutely. Well, we hope for the best, uh, and uh, we are uh, firmly believed you will be elected to the bench and make another milestone as the first Asian American judge in Queens, any uh, surrogate court judge in Queens, any New York. Well, we are reaching the end of our program today. Uh, again, thank you so much for your time, Judge Lee. And uh, at, during the holiday season, may I wish you a very prosperous and a wonderful New Year of Dragon and a Gong Xi Fa Cai. Gong Xi Fa Cai. Thank you. Thank you, Chen and Sam here. And wish everybody a happy and healthy Lunar New Year, Gong Xi Fa Cai, Long Nian Da Ji, Long Tan Fu Yao, Sinti Jian Kan, Ba Jia Huan Le. Xie Xie. Thank you, Judge Lee. Thank you. See you next time. Aloha. Uh, thank you very much.